today we'll pick up from where we left off creating kinematic connections to look at how we can recover the kinematic connection joint loads for multiple load cases. We'll begin by creating a new solution 402 that will create a nonlinear static subcase as opposed to a nonlinear dynamic subcase which we did for our earlier solution. Now to recover joint results we need to go and select the joint result, turn it on, and then also make sure that we change from default to the result that we want. So here I've selected force, moment, displacement, and angle results. And lastly we also want to turn on large displacements. All right, so here we'll create our nonlinear static subcase, and we're going to create an end time equal to the number of load cases that we have. So that's three, and the number of increments also will be three. So here as a first test, what we'll do is we'll create a load that is time dependent and the time is going to represent our load case. So here we'll select time as our independent variable and we have a spreadsheet that has values for our loads in X, Y, and Z. So here we'll open that spreadsheet and these loads are in Newton, so we'll go ahead and change the units for our column 2, which is our force in our global y direction. Since the loads in the other directions are zero, it's not necessary, but we can also change the units for those columns as well. All right, I've also put a scale factor of minus one, so instead of the loads going up in the y direction, they'll go down. All right, so let's go ahead and drag our constraints into our solution, or we can simply add them to the active solution or step. So you can see now they're in our solution 402S, along with our fours. One more thing we want to do is uh, that user-defined constraint was free for rotations about Z. We'll go ahead and fix that and solve. Here, I'll pause the video and you can see it takes about 11 seconds to run. And we'll go ahead and post-process the results. So first thing you'll notice is that we have a lot of XY plots and these here are our joint results. We created a revolute joint. You can see it has a Revo prefix, but how do we know which number corresponds to which kinematic connection? What we need to do is go into info prepost node element element and then go ahead and drag a box around the middle of it there and you'll get the, uh, the C joint. And there you can see the element number for our C joint that connects the crank to the connecting rod. So if we want we can create uh, an XY plot of our results in Y and Z. X is along the axis of rotation. So here you can see the values for our joint 3977 We can also do an info on one of the items, or we can do a listing, which will show our results in a tabular format. All right, so we can look at those values, uh, and let's remember those along with the results for Y and Z for our other joint up at the top here. 
And we can validate these results as well by drawing a free body diagram. Here you can see, doing a little trig, we can get a double check on our results at that particular angle. Next what we'll do is rotate the crank so that the assembly is at top dead center and recover our joint loads in the new orientation. So here to do that, I'll go ahead and clone our earlier solution. We'll call it 402 top dead center. We'll go ahead and remove our fixed constraint on the crank because we're going to want to rotate it. And the way we'll rotate it is with an enforced displacement constraint. So here we'll make everything zero except our rotation, which we'll put in a table-based field that will be dependent on time. And at time zero, we'll have our angle zero. And at time one, we want to have it rotated up to top dead center. So we'll put in that angle that we need to rotate the crank to get it there. And then at time three, we want it to stay at top dead center, so that way we can evaluate our three load cases in that orientation. All right, so let's go ahead and select our point at the center of our spider. That's connected to the face of our crank. And we're ready to solve. So here I'll pause the video while we're solving. But you can see in the bottom right hand corner of the solution monitor that 14 seconds have elapsed. And let's take a look at our joint results. Now I'm expecting the Y or DOF2 component 2 of our results to be equal because the local coordinate systems for the joints should be in line with their y-axis. So here we'll just take a look at our displacements to confirm that we are at top dead center and then we can go ahead and plot our results in the y direction for joint for both of the joints. You can see they're not equal so something is wrong in the model. One of the finer points where I was sloppy in my initial definition of the kinematic connection is that the orientation of our CSIS that we associated to our kinematic connection needs to be tied to the independent geometry. Here I tied it to the dependent geometry. So instead of moving with the crank, which I've aligned the y-axis with the crank, it's moving with the connecting rod, which we don't want. So here I'll deselect the incorrect geometry and select the correct geometry which is the crank for our independent or target 2 and swap basically the region there for our dependent to be the connecting rod. Now I did specify this one correctly and here we can see that if we edit the connection and take a look. Here I've my intent was to align the y-axis with the connecting rod, so that means we want our connecting rod face to be the independent face. And here if I stand on it, you can see that it is. So that's correctly specified. Meaning that that coordinate system is going to move with the connecting rod, which is what we want. So now that we've fixed that, let's go ahead and solve. And I'll pause the video another 11 seconds and we'll take a look at our results for our joints. And here we'll look at those same results for component 2 for both of our revolute joints. And what you'll see now is that they're exactly equal. Not only that, but also you can see because it's in line with the line of action of the load that I applied, that it's equal to that load. So there's 10, 15, and 5. And that's how we can recover joint loads 
for multiple load cases with kinematic connections. Thank you.